Hi, I'm Lorian. This is my YouTube channel, and this is episode 12 of the Knitting and podcast. Today is July 11th, and it's great to come to you and give you a couple of updates on what I've been working on. And I'm hoping you can help me with some of my plans for my next knits. Help me prioritize, figure out what order to knit them in. If you are new here, thanks for checking things out. If you are coming back, it's good to see you again. I mostly talk about knitting, but there are there is the and, and sometimes we get into really different topics. Uh, and um, today is mostly, like I said, gonna, today's and is actually gonna be knitting related and it will be about kind of what I'm in the mood to knit with, knit now. Uh, so I have a couple of finished objects. The first one I'm actually going to talk about is something I have given away. So I have a photo of it and on episode 11, I showed you a finished object, which is the market square, which is a knitted bag designed by Sharon Ann Halt. Sharon, uh, ran a yarn store in, I think Montana. Sharon passed away a couple of years ago and this is her design and wherever you see this wherever I've seen <laughs> now this yarn sold so it's designed in Queensland con and the bag comes in two sizes I first knit the small one and a friend said oh I love that so much so I thought I'm gonna make her the big one uh, so the two colors that I used it calls the small bag calls for two skeins this yarn is Aaron weight it is I want to say 190 yards 60% cotton, 40% acrylic, 190 yards. Uh, I knit the bag in a size seven needle. Uh, I used for this one, the colors Cape York was my main color and that's two skeins for the large size. And then the second color I used is called Lizard Island. Um, and without further ado, I'm gonna show you a picture. So it was mostly in blues. The first, the smaller bag I knit was more tans and reds. This one had, these two colors had a lot of blues in them. Um, I knit pretty much exactly to pattern with the exception of the yarn store where I purchased these is a the yarn store in Ridgefield, Connecticut, near where I live named Nancy O. <laughs> and they recommended lengthening the strap, especially on a larger bag. The strap is pretty short, but for a small bag that was, that made sense. So I added 30, 20, 20 stitches to the length of the strap, um, finished it up and sort of surprised my friend. She knew when she said, oh, that's so cute, that I was probably gonna make her one. Uh, so that has been given away. My other finish, which I call finished because the knitting is finished. It's very hard to show because it's black, but I'm gonna put it on. So. This is the Milton cardigan. It has been blocked. It, the ends have not been woven. Push my chair back and try and show you. So it is a tone on tone cardigan. It's fairly long. Um, I knit mine, so I did knit this nearly all fully to pattern. I believe I knit the size three, which really should not have given me quite this much ease. So maybe my gauge was a little bit smaller, or larger rather, maybe my stitches are larger. Um, it called for a fairly longer sleeve than I knit. Um, I, it didn't, the sleeves didn't, I think they maybe grew an inch. The body in the initial pattern grows three inches. And because of that, I actually knit mine three inches, three, four, four inches shorter than what the pattern calls for. Ho oh, he is five foot seven, I am five foot three. And I am so happy with this. I'm going to get a ton of wear out of it. It is knit in La Vienna May, Sport Nouveau, which is a merino based sport color, sport yarn, and Little Kuma, which is one of her, oh, it's got like stuff in it because I knit it at the beach. Um, this is her lighter weight Surrey. There's a regular, there's Kumo, and then there's Little Kumo. Um, and I needed an extra skein of that. And this took two and a half skeins, I think, of this one, or two and a third. Um, it's, it's going to, I, I haven't woven in the ends, as I mentioned, here we go. Um, but I will, it's not, it's very lightweight. Um, and I'm really happy to have it in black. 
I the tip I use is I have you I used Lika needles, I used my pink tips, I used a colored cord, and that made it easier to see what I was working on. This is also not a complicated stitch pattern, so that it's fairly, not like twisting stitches or knitting cables. I am gonna take it off because I'm gonna get warm. I seem to be collecting my knits right now as they're finished, finished blocking, and I will probably just have to tune in to a football game or something once football season starts here to do all the finishing. I'm not super motivated to like weave in ends unless something's a gift right now. Uh, so those are my two finishes. I highly recommend this pattern. One thing that it really brought to my attention was that I'd like to make a white cardigan. I don't have anything picked out yet. I don't think I have enough yarn in my stash. Somewhere between maybe a DK, maybe a sport weight, maybe a fingering, one of those three. Not another Milton, um, just a solid white drapey, no buttons. I don't really love buttons on my cardigans. I plan to, to make some more cardigans for my wardrobe and only one of, I, I just, I don't, I think for me, buttons are just kind of fussy. I like them to fall, to, to run long rather than waist length, although I have a couple that are that way as well. Um, I like them longer and in those cases, I just feel like the buttons wear them down. I do have my one cardigan that has buttons and the buttons are probably just too heavy for the sweater itself. They are a little floppy. Um, and of course, yes, that'd be very easy to change, but I'd work, rather work on new stuff. So speaking of which, I have two works in progress. I'm gonna get close and grab the first one. Uh, where's my, okay. So the first one is not seen a lot of attention this week just because I've been kind of captivated by the other one that I've been working on, um, which is flying by. So the first one is knit in Terrapin Fiberworks. There we go, maybe. <laughs> Uh, and it is in the gar on the garlic colorway and the base is called Severin DK. It is, a, a, it, it's all tensile, 100% tensile, which is a um, plant-based fiber. And, but it's very light and silky, um, which is lovely, but it doesn't really feel like a DK, um, but it is described as a DK. So there's really not that much to show other than this very pretty color. It is, it has a shine to it. Uh, this is the Tolsta Tank. I did not have not knit the Tolsta T, which came out probably about a year before. I don't know if you, how much it's picking up. Picking up a little bit of the golder tones. It has pink tones and gold tones um, in it. And it's this is the gauge that it calls for. I'm knitting it uh, one needle size down. So I'm knitting this on a seven. And I knit my bottom ribbing on a smaller needle. And it's basically, I'm, it's gonna look a lot, hopefully, like this shirt that I'm wearing as far as it has a straight neck and it has smaller straps. Um, tank, courtesy of Primark, just picked it up today. I'm, I do, I love Primark um, t-shirts and tanks, by the way. Okay, oh, and mm, this is the La Bienna May from the Milton. I know I've showed this in some earlier episodes. So this is the Little Kumo which is 65% baby surrey, 35% silk, and a put up of 437 meters. And like I said, the other was the sport, sport and bow. Okay, what has been taking my time, let me grab my, grab everything here. Okay, is a sweater I cast on literally in the last week and it calls for two colors, three colors. You could certainly use more. I decided because I was making some modifications to use a fourth color. I kind of wish I hadn't. Not that I'm unhappy with how it's coming out. I just feel like it's probably not the best utilization of the yarn as it turns out. So I am using, let's see, two colors come from Explorer Knits and Fibers. And this is on the Denali sock, which is an 80-20, 400 yards base. The, I don't have color names because these were, I think she calls them leave no waste, leave no trace, leave no trace. Um, and so they were odd ones or using up um, the rest of the dye. 
Um, I'm excited to have used this game because I've had this for several, several years. I bought it at a New York Sheep and, nope, at a Vogue Knitting Live New York. This is from Suburban Stitcher. It is her sock base. It's a 75-25 and the colorway is Rouge. I guess I should show you the colors as I'm doing this, right? Yeah, so the Rouge is this. It's a soft red. And, ooh. The Denali sock from Explore Knits and Fibers are these two colors. One's a gold and one's like a creamy gray white with gold and brown flecks in it. And that's just a random light bulb stitch marker that cuts, or stitch marker, clippy marker. And then the third, the fourth color is this, which is a one of a kind. I honestly think this is probably making the path, the, the piece for me. Um, it's clearly very sparkly. It is from Madeline Tosh. It is Tosh TML. Yep, TML and plus glitter. So it's Tosh Merino light and glitter. But it was called a one of a kind. I believe my friend Debbie gave me this as a gift. It's 420 yards. And here, oh, out of screen, here is my knit. So this is the Rumble Raglan. It is a design by Lydia Morrow, and it's a top-down raglan. I have about nine inches of body here, and I created a different neckline. Well, I will be <laughs> creating a different neckline. It starts with either a folded or a ribbed collar, and I saw a, pat, a project where someone did a picked up at the end and did an I-cord collar, so I'm probably gonna do that. Um, this pattern calls for a lot of negative ease. Uh, so much that I have to look it up and tell you <laughs> what it calls for. Um, my friend Shannon, who is Whiskey and Wool, uh, knit this and I absolutely loved her. She knit it last fall and I was like, I, I definitely have to make one of these. Okay, so how much ease is called for? Between a size to go up, let's see. So, Top has worn significant negative ease. Let's see, stretch. Sorry, I don't have this handy. Um, a lot. I mean, probably like four to 10 plus inches of negative ease. I'm gonna put it in the notes just to, to get it right. Um, Shannon did not do that with hers. I'm gonna put this, I'm gonna try and put it on for you. It's going to stretch a lot. So it's it's a two by two. The fabric is made from two by two uh, color work. And you just alternate which colors go in um, each time, each couple of rounds. So it is fitted, but it's supposed to be a lot more fitted. And I haven't blocked this yet. And the color will be kind of, it's gonna block out a ton. So I, I'm loving it. I'm having so much fun knitting this. Um, I have to decide it's supposed to be cropped. Mine will not be cropped. The other thing is it's short sleeves. And I think there are decreases. I don't think I'm even doing many decreases on my sleeves. Uh, what else can I tell you? Oh, so I did make quite a few. I made some modifications similar to what Shannon did. Although I think she knit a different size than I am. So I am knitting the size five based on the bust measurement, the finished bust measurement, which gives me one inch of negative ease. One, one and a half. In doing so, it would have come way too low, like the, the, the raglan, for based on how this pattern is designed. It's designed to be a very wide, like raglan, short sleeves, and then a cropped body probably not my best proportions for me. So I'm knitting a size closer to my size, but in doing so, I needed the decreases to happen faster so that they were finished by the time my arms were done. 
So I looked, so I knew what stitch count that I needed around the body based on gauge and just the size that I was knitting for. So I knew what I needed to end my raglans in and um, I looked, so my raglan section is actually the stitch count three sizes larger. And I stopped earlier than they got to. Um, it's a little complicated, but truth be told, the pattern is, but I was a little overwhelmed when I first saw it. It's 20 plus pages and there's a lot of fabulous information. But as I just sort of took it all in and read through the different sections, there's options for bust shaping, um, like adding bust darts. Because I'm making a bigger size, I don't really need that um, bigger size than is called for. If, it, if I were making the fitted with the recommended ease, I would probably need those. Um, the stitch count for the raglan for all the sizes is marked out in this phenomenal chart. And so it was pretty easy for me once I realized, oh, I need to get to this many stitches within this length of time, um, which is actually like the second size is the yoke I wanted, the yoke depth I wanted, but with the width that I wanted. So I basically have been able to pick the proportions of the sweater as I want to knit it, as I want it to fit. Um, like I said, I'm having a ton of fun making this. I'm tempted to make a second or a third, and we'll talk about that. Um, and I'm, I'm hoping to kind of move it off my needles pretty soon. Um, it's, been, it's been a very quick knit. The only thing I would say is don't be, I wouldn't say the word tricked, but you know, keep in mind, because I didn't have this in mind and I thought this would be um, a summer wear for me. It won't be because it's two layers thick um, because the whole thing is color work, basically. It's two by two. I'm gonna show you the inside, which is pretty interesting to look at, I think. My floats are beautiful because they're just two by two. You don't have to carry any floats. Um, so here's the inside of the sweater. It's kind of fun. Um, and it's flattering on so many different um, body types, body, all body shapes and sizes. Um, like I said, the designer's name is Lydia Morrow and Lydia, I think is a British designer. And on Instagram, it, uh, Lydia goes under the handle, what Lydia made made or makes one of those um not much more to share the like i said the only thing i wish i had just realized i got a little nervous about using three colors which was my original intention uh and then i threw in the red at the end because i thought oh since i'm changing these proportions i am going to have a wider body sooner because my increases are happening faster and i thought i might not have enough yarn I probably will have plenty of yarn. I think her estimate, estimates are very generous, like give you a lot of room. And so it's not the best utilization of four full skeins of yarn, but those skeins of yarn, like they didn't, I didn't have a plan for them anyway. Um, so that is, those are the two whips I have currently in progress. I have not bought yarn, but, I did buy some bags. So one of my episodes, I think it's episode two or three, I talk about de-stashes and where do you search for de-stashes of wool or what anything. One of the groups I follow on Ravelry is uh, Knitting Bag Lust. And sometimes there are things in there that I just can't pass up. Recently there was a post as early as the same week that I'm recording. Uh, there was a post for some Hohe & Co. Pompa buckets. I have one, it's the big size, um, with the short handles. It's not my favorite bag to use, although I love the look of it. But the small ones with the short handles were there, and several colors, and I couldn't decide which, so I splurged on both, which you got a volume discount, so that was kind of fun. So I splurged on the rose gold, a bucket this is actually I use these as my handbag I don't generally use them for knitting bags they're beautiful leather uh, one of my dearest oldest dearest friends works for a handbag company and she runs production and she looks at these and says how phenomenally they're made and how good the leather is um, and the second one I couldn't resist 
which is empty, so it's folding, is the black. Kind of a classic pump a bucket. Um, so, treated myself there. I finished a book. I finished this book, which I think I showed in episode 11 because I was reading it. Uh, it's called Knitting a Novel. It is by Anne Bartlett. Um, my mom got this book, I think, in like, I don't know, at a tag sale, yard sale or something. It's okay. Didn't love it. Um, it really is not, it's a little bit about knitting. It's kind of what ties some of the characters together. Um, I probably, I, 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 I wouldn't strongly recommend. There are too many good, phenomenal books out there. Um, the school where I work is, has every month a challenge of a different type of whatever. It could be based on the color of the cover. It could be based on the type of book. But this month's, this month's challenge, so I took a book out over the summer, uh, was to read from a genre, a genre that you don't usually. So I chose a biography. So I have started The Short and Tragic Life of Robert Peace. It's written by Jeff Hobbs. Uh, it says, a brilliant young man who fled Newark for the Ivy League. And um, it was a New York Times bestseller. Um, it's very, it's very factual. So it's, 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 it's a more dense and heavy read. And I, get, I believe it's kind of sad, which I don't mind. Um, I'm about 50 pages in on a 400 page book. So I'm not reading as much because I'm knitting so much, but I am enjoying this book so far. So far, so good. Okay. That's really everything that's been in progress so far. Um, a couple of quick life stuff as I pull up my notes. Okay. Uh, my daughter's birthday, her 19th birthday was Tuesday, and she had some friends from... Her local friends, some college friends come, and it was basically a two-day birthday extravaganza at our house, and um, her friends were lovely, and it was the first time a lot of them were meeting, and that was fantastic. Um, we have family vacation uh, up the coast planned for next week, and we're bringing Cooper, and that should be also relaxing and good, and um, not so far from home, so my son has to go into work a couple of days, he can very easily commute from there instead of our regular house. Next week is also the midpoint to my summer break. So it's kind of, I feel like once that week is over, everything is gonna, time's just gonna fly. And I, as much as I'll be excited to get back to work, I'm not rushing. I am enjoying the summer and catching up on my knits and um, just, and sleep. Oh, catching up on a lot of sleep. So enjoying that as well. Uh, let's see. So the and part, knitting adjacent this time, is what should I knit next? What should I cast on? I have a few options. So the first might be might be a second Rumble Raglan. Um, let me pull those. So I have been trying to figure out quite what I want to do with all of my mini skeins. And I am planning a fertiganser, so that is one idea, but I'll show you a picture of that. I have these colors that I think will not go into it. They're kind of, let's call it Sherbert, the Sherbert project. Um, I might knit them with this orange as well. And I think it would make a really cute fertiganser, no, a really cute rumble raglan um, and a fun way to use up these minis. So, um, so there's that. I also, so I have, it could go with this orange, could also go with this pinky orange, which I kind of leaning towards. I think that would be really fun. And I don't mind wearing a brightish sweater. I have a few brightish ones. It would be a great way to use these. Um, so that's one idea. Another is the Fertigans, to start the Fertiganser, which is a fingering weight sweater, but it is long sleeves. I'm not so excited about that at the moment. I've also been playing with my colors for that. Let me pull that up so I can show you. Um, let's see. Yeah, it's, I feel like 
that is also a whole all over color work sweater and it's not gonna be a warm weather knit and it's not short sleeves. So let me take a look and pull that up. I do plan to knit it. I have sort of been doing a lot of thinking about the color combinations because it's gonna take about 20 mini skeins and let me just, um, maybe more. And I want, I want to make something, it's going to, it's going to be quite a bit of time invested. So I want to make sure I choose colors I'm going to wear. I originally had all of those greens and yellows in with pinks and purples. And then I just looked at it. It was like, I, I don't think I'm going to wear that. I don't personally love purple and orange together. Um, so this is what it looks like. Actually, I'm going to show you, um, Laurel's sweater. Cause there, I was really inspired by, um, Laurel of West goes by West Maven and knit all the things podcast. Let me just pull up hers to show you. And she's completely adorable in this picture. Um, I don't have exactly the color she has and I don't know. She even says she's not sure she's going to wear hers because of all of the colors in it. Um, but she looks super cute in her picture. Okay, here we go. So that is it, and she used mini skeins, and that was she was who inspired me um, to turn my mini skeins into this. So she used quite a lot of pinks. I guess she's purples. So at the moment, mine would be pink, purple, blues. Um, that's an option. I don't know that in July I want to turn that, start that one, and I feel like it's such a commitment knit. I still want to hold off on that one. Um, another idea. Is I have this skein which I bought when I was in London last February and this is going to become an Oslo hat for Todd it's uh, by Laxton's Yorkshire 100% British wool sheep soft DK and I believe it's I don't know if it has a color shade is called kettle well uh, shade it says kettle well DK but that could be the base I'm not sure uh, the thing that's super nice about this is spun by Laxton's from fleece to finished yarn in less than 50 miles. So they're very environmentally conscious about their, um, their footprint and it just was pretty excited. It's 225 meters, so a pretty typical DK. This would be kind of a wooly thing, but a hat is pretty quick. I've never knit the Oslo hat, which is a pattern by Petite Knit. That's what this is going to become. He's not gonna wear it for months. What else do I have? Oh, so I have two other potential cast on ideas for right away, more or less. I, another G stash that I shopped, I found this online in the, in a Facebook group called A Real Yarn D stash. So I have these five colors and I have two of the gray. These are DK, they are super wash. They are by Nice and Knit, who were who are uh, sisters who had a yarn dyeing business, which was very seemed very successful, um, but they have been sort of out of out of the market for a while. Nice and Knit DK, and this is our superwash merino wool, 230 yards uh, per 100 grams, and I am going to turn this into a cardigan, uh, a striped cardigan. I'm going to, I think I'm going to use Alicia Plummer's Thereafter pattern, which I have knit before. It has some texture on the sleeves and the collar and a pattern in the back. I'm going to ditch all of that and just knit a basic cardigan, just using those stitch counts. Um, so that has potential. And then the last idea that I have for my next cast on is the Oban vest, which is a pattern by Thea Coleman. And I have Four skeins of yarn for my friend Jenny. Renninger Wool Co. And, oops, that's the sheep who made, whose fleece made this yarn. Uh, I think it's Winnie, Wool, Winnie Woolly Buns 2024. It's a DK. It's not quite her darkest brown, but um, gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. So that is going to become an Oban 
Vest by Thea Coleman. Uh, yeah, I need to have, um, we decided Jenny's knitting that also in some of her yarn and I'm gonna be seeing her in early September. It won't take me a month to knit that. So let me know what you think I should start next. I have very much enjoyed gift knitting. I do also have a baby dress to make, but that baby's not coming till October and that just feels too far away for me. So the ideas again are a, no, a new rumble raglan, which in my mind is probably the first, like the top choice. Um, hat for Todd and uh, Oslo hat for Todd. The striped DK cardigan, I'm using nice and knit. The Oban vest. So let me know what you would like to see next. Let me know what you think um, I should do next. There's a big part of me, I'm crazy to say because I just cast this rumble raglan on in the last week, but it's going very quickly. Um, and so maybe, so I am going to get that to a point where it's near finished. Maybe the body's finished before I cast on anything, but I'm thinking, I'm already thinking beyond what I have now. And the other thing is I would like to get that to a point so I can kind of gauge how much yarn is actually needed for one of those sweaters for me in the dimensions that I like it so that I have better utilization of my arms and less partial skein leftovers. I think I could take the Fertigenser off. That's not gonna be the next thing. I need to stare at those colors more. But let me know um, if any of those are, um, inspire you, what I should start next. I'm, I don't know if I'm ready to knit with DK. I feel like it's coming, I'm not sure. And I do have a couple of sport weight sweaters, not ready to knit with those. They're usually, they're probably woolier wools. Okay, that's it for today. I will see you again soon. If you are not currently subscribing to the channel, please consider subscribing. You can find me here on Ravelry and Instagram as Yarn Love Turtle. Let's be friends. Love to talk knitting or other things. And a special shout out to anybody who's not a knitter. I know there are some non-knitters who listen to the channel and I don't know if it means anything to you, what would I talk about, but it's great to have you here too. Take care.